last semester in legal writing, we ended up talking a lot about how to predict the outcome of a case. And we were given the client fact pattern, and we would use a very rigid structure to determine what would likely be the outcome. And we were writing these memos to other peers who would who agreed with our points of views and would ultimately just needed the information. Now we're moving more from this predictive format into a persuasive format. And that's how a lot of the semester is going to go. And so now we need to learn what is similar between this predictive and persuasive formats and how and can we really develop the skills that are necessary to develop strong writing ability in a persuasive manner. Well, how are they similar? Well, first of all, I mean, all kinds of legal writing requires the same kind of systems. That is, you need to do legal analysis, and you need to do that by determining what the law is and how it applies to your clients. Persuasive light writing continues to follow this deductive approach, where we start with the legal rule, and then we apply it to a very specific client fact pattern. Now, how are they different? Well, ultimately, our biggest difference is the audience. In predictive writing, our audience are our associates, uh, whether it's bosses or clients, whoever it might be. So we're writing to people who are on the same side of what we're thinking. Per uh, persuasive, on the other hand, we're writing to opposing parties. Uh, we're writing to judges. People who may not yet, and actually do not yet, share our point of view in a matter. And so we're trying our best to persuade these people to take our side of view. Now there are a couple of things that I need to discuss, really one thing, before getting into a couple of tips on how to persuade. First, ethical things. Some of the ethical things that we need to do need to realize is you need to include things that are averse to your clients. So if there's a case that you find that doesn't look great for your client, you can't just leave it out. It has to be included. The same thing with fact patterns. You can't leave out evidence. You have to include it. With that said, there are ways to minimize how detrimental that verse information can be. And this leads into the tips to persuade. First, the thing that we need to do is that we need to speak clearly to state our position. There should be no guessing what our position is. We shouldn't be tentative. We shouldn't say, I guess, I suppose, I think. Uh, we should say, this is what's happening. This is what happened. This is a true. This is the fact. And the reason for that is because if you are tentative about your position, even if you're not in person, but you're tentative in your writing, well then, it looks like you don't believe what you're actually saying. And if you don't believe what you're actually saying, well then, neither will the reader. The second thing to realize is that you need to know when to emphasize and de-emphasize a point. And know where the emphasis points are and where the de-emphasis points are. Emphasis points are at the beginning or the end of a paragraph or sentence. And so the strongest points, the points that people see, are at the beginning and the end. If you want to de-emphasize something, you want to put it in the middle. And the reason why this is, is you kind of sandwich it. it. It's not really hiding it, because it's still there, but you are not making those clear up front of what that verse stuff could be. Along with that, you want to state your arguments first. So if you have something that is averse to your client, you want to say the positive things uh, before getting into how to minimize it. And what I mean by that is even within the same sentence, you can say something that is positive that devalues the value of the negative thing. And the reason for this is because it puts you onto the offensive instead of the defensive. If you're on the defensive, it really promotes, it, it doesn't look as strong of an argument. So those are a few tips of how to persuade. That's really the difference between predictive and persuasive writing. 
and ultimately we're going to be doing a lot of persuasive writing uh, through appellate briefs throughout the semester. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Law Schoolers. Before I let you go, there are four things I want to say. The first thing is if you enjoyed these episodes and if you enjoyed the website, I would invite you to go and join Law Schoolers Pro. And you can do that by going to lawschoolers.com slash join. It's a way for you to support us, but there's also a lot of features there that I think you will enjoy. Second thing is that nearly all of our episodes are unedited. The only ones that aren't are pre-law materials. And the reason for that is so you can actually see the legal material in its raw form as I'm learning it as well. The third thing is that the information contained in these episodes are specifically only for educational purposes. They're not to be used as legal advice. And with that, the fourth thing is if it is used as legal advice, we are not liable. That is, law schoolers is not liable for any legal outcomes. Thank you again for enjoying the show. Have a good one.